Hello, welcome to Biology for You. In this video, we are going to discuss Illumina DNA sequencing technique. So, in this series of videos, we have been discussing different DNA sequencing technologies. And this Illumina DNA sequencing is one of the popular next generation DNA sequencing. So, this next generation DNA sequencing techniques are high throughput methods in which the very large fragments of the DNA or maybe a genomic DNA or maybe a DNA from a chromosome of higher organism will be sequenced in a single stretch. That means the DNA sequencing will be in a massive and parallelized sequencing. That means the DNA to be sequenced will be cleaved into small fragments and each fragment will be again cloned into large set of copies or a clone. So the efficiency of the DNA sequencing will be increased because of the large set of sequences obtained for each fragment. So all these fragments are amplified and sequenced simultaneously. So in a single stretch we are going to have very large set of sequences for each fragment in a single reaction. So here it increases the efficiency of the sequencing as well as the these methods are speed having high speed and also these are very cost uh, very much cost effective. So by this massive and parallelized sequencing the NGS DNA sequencing technologies like Illumina, Roche 454 and Ion Tone, these three are the popular next generation DNA sequencing techniques. These next generation DNA sequencing techniques are allowed us to sequence a genomic DNA in a single day or something like that. So here this Illumina This company established in the San Diego, San Diego in year of 1998 and is the one of the leading company in the field of DNA sequencing. There are many missions that have been designed by this, uh, this company and that are Minisec. Minisec 2500, these are the models, and HiSec, uh, HiSec 3000, 4000, etc. There are many more. And this Illumina DNA sequencing basically, the principle is that in Illumina DNA sequencing, we are going to have the sequence based on the synthesis that means large DNA uh, will be fragmented and cloned and for each fragment uh, that will be denatured into single stranded DNA and for the single stranded DNA that is allowed to uh, synthesis its complementary strand. So during the synthesis of complementary strand we are going to obtain our sequence so that is the basic principle. Here in the Illumina DNA sequencing the principle is that here the sequencing will be carried using the reversible terminators. So these reversible terminators are the nucleotides only. So for uh, all nucleotides that are going to be added in the uh, synthesis of the DNA are reversible terminators. That means they have blockage group which can block the synthesis event for a while. That means these are not complete terminators but the termination can be reverted. That means these nucleotides D and TPs can go and enter into the growing chain, growing DNA chain and thereby they stop the DNA synthesis for a while, they hold the reaction for a while until the type of nucleotide that is attached will produce a signal that to be that is to be detected. 
so once after the type of nucleotide that is added in this particular position of the nucleotide is detected the the nucleotides dntps are treated with the enzyme which can remove this blocking groups so the blocking groups will be removed from the nucleotide so that the addition of ad, addition of upcoming nucleotide will be possible that means the blocking may happen uh, at the 3 prime position so that uh, this o is not available oxygen is not available for the upcoming phosphodiester bond so once after this enzyme uh, enzymatic treatment is given with given to the reversible terminators or the nucleotides that are added in the dna uh, sequence then these blocking groups will be removed and they are ready for the uh, second round of nucleotide addition so like that that is the basic principle and idea of the lumina sequencing so coming to the next point in the illumina dna sequencing we are going to have a uh, bridge amplification so that is the other important process that need to be discussed so this bridge amplification is the type of pcr amplification in which the bridges will be formed and the clusters will be generated on the flow cell uh, to which small adopters are adsorbed so here let's uh, let us discuss the whole process in detail for the understanding what is exactly bridge amplification is so here there are basically three steps in the illumina dna sequencing the first step is the cluster generation sorry the first step is the library preparation preparation so that means here the genomic dna will be cleaved fragmented using the restriction enzymes so first step is the fragmentation second step is the ligation that means for each fragment two kinds of adopters added 3 prime adopter and 5 prime adopter so two different kinds of adopters that are added on each fragment so that is the ligation if in the technique in this illumina technique these two processes are simultaneously taken this fragmentation and the ligation are simultaneous then it is called as tagmentation so this is called tagmentation so that is what library preparation is here these uh, double stranded libraries are denatured into single stranded forms once after this ligation event takes place so next step is the denaturation so towards the end of library preparation there will be a single stranded dna fragments uh, and which which have the 3 prime and 5 prime adopters towards their ends so that is what library preparation is so once after all fragments what adopter ligated and denatured then the cluster generation can be carried that means each fragment is amplified into number of copies or a cluster so this is basically a pcr amplification process here this single stranded dna fragments with the two adopters will be allowed to attach with complementary sequences provided on the flow cell 
this flow cell is nothing but a solid surface on which there will be complementary sequences to this adopters are attached on the on its surface that means there will be number of sequences dna small oligonucleotide see uh, oligonucleotide strands that are attached on the flow cell and all these oligonucleotides have the complementary sequences with either with the 3 prime end of the adopter or the 5 prime end of the adopter so due to their complementary nature the single stranded dna fragments will be attached will be go and bind with the with this uh, complementary sequences so why not we use colors to represent these attachments so let us consider this red as the 3 prime adopter and blue as the complementary sequence so here because of this complementary nature once after pcr reaction is carried the second strand will be synthesized so like that all attached dna single strands will be synthesized for their complementary strands so the all these double strands are ne in the next step are allowed to denature due to denaturation these two strands will be separated these two strands will be separated and once after washing the washing step is carried one strand which is not attached with the flow cell that is the template strand will be just washed away so all the single strands which are added in the previous step because of their complementary nature or all are got washed away and the newly synthesized strand will be attached with the flow cell because of the complementary sequence which is already adsorbed on this flow cell surface so here once after this denaturation and washing step is carried the flow cell remains with the single strands so the single strands have the other end on their other end that is which complementary to the second type of oligonucleotide present on the flow cell so because of this complementary nature they will bend towards the second type of complementary sequence and they will be binding with that so once after this binding event takes place there will be again PCR amplification towards this direction and again the denaturation and followed by washing, washing step is carried to separate these two fragments so by the second round of amplification followed by denaturation followed by washing there will be again two strands but both are attached on their surface so two strands will be will remain on the flow cell and again there will be bending bridge formation this bending is also called as bridge formation and followed by amplification to produce their complementary strands and by the end of second step there will be four single strands and these 
all four single strands will bend towards their complementary sequence the form bridge and followed by the amplification of their complementary strands and that will be followed by denaturation and washing to yield eight eight such single strands so likewise the dna amplification followed by denaturation is uh, followed until a cluster is developed from each fragment so on the flow cell by the end of this cluster generation process or pcr amplification process this flow cell is just filled with the clusters of the dna so each cluster represent the copies from a single type of fragment so each cluster represent the represents a fragment obtained from the genomic dna so as we cut cleave the genomic dna into many class many fragments for each fragment there will be a cluster this cluster which carries number of copies for the representing fragment so that is what cluster generation or bridge amplification is so once after this pcr amplification is carried there is again in the third step there is sequencing so during the sequencing procedure this is basically a uh, sequencing based on synthesis process that means for all strands single strands present in the cluster are allowed to synthesis their synthesize their complementary strands so during the synthesis of complementary strand the sequencing will be carried that means addition of nucleotides dntps at every position will be monitored so here all these dntps as we already discussed are reversible terminators so here the addition of every dntp to the every cluster will be monitored which produces a type of signal based on the type of dntp is added that means let us consider it as a copy of dna that is going to be synthesis synthesized and sequenced during the process of this sequencing so here is a type of dntp that is going to be added so at this position 1 so at first nucleotide position say for example datp is added so here at the cluster 1 at nucleotide 1 position there is a addition of datp then as we already discussed this is a reversible terminator that means it has the blockage group which holds the reaction for a while and once after the detector system detects the signal obtained from this nucleotide addition then it releases the by the enzymatic reaction we can remove the blockage group blocking group from this reversible terminator or the uh, nucleotide that is added in the synthesizing strand so once after this blocking group is removed then uh, this nucleotide first nucleotide is ready for the second round of amplification that means addition of second nucleotide so here until end of the dna uh, dna fragment there will be monitoring of every type of nucleotide and that produces a type of signal so for many clusters present on the flow cell every cluster is monitored for the 
type of signal that is provided. So likewise the DNA sequencing is carried. So until now we discussed how the library is prepared from the for the Illumina sequencing. In this um, we discussed how the DNA uh, DNA to be sequenced will be uh, will be cleaved into small fragments and all fragments are added with the uh, adopters and followed by the denatured into single stranded forms and followed by during the cluster generation the single stranded DNAs are added on the flow cell which contains their complementary sequences so upon the uh, upon this flow cell there is a bridge amplification event and followed by the denaturation so so by the end of each round of PCR amplification there is a doubling of the uh, copies number of copies from each fragments so likewise there will be large set of copies for each fragment or cluster is generated so likewise for genomic DNA there will be number of clusters that are obtained by the end of this cluster generation process or PCR amplification. So during the sequencing procedure these reversible terminators of the uh, nucleotides are added. Addition of every type of nucleotide is monitored from each cluster simultaneously and detector system will detect the type of signal produced from each uh, cluster before going uh, going for the next round of amplification so that is how the illumina dna sequencing works